when I tell you how long I've not had some really nice roast breadfruit, freshly roasted breadfruit, I it's been a while and I was anticipating last Sunday's dinner and it was so delicious. Thank you so much for stopping by on my page. Welcome if you're new and for those who have been here with me, I appreciate you for always coming back and showing your support. I know this video is late, but it's better late than never, right? So we went outside and we roast this breadfruit that my mom brought back from Miami. I am also dog sitting for Tashika and this dog just want to play. His name is Oreo and he won't leave me alone. So if you want, you can roast the breadfruit in the oven. I've done it before and it works fine. But, you know, we just want to do it the authentic way, roasting it on the coal fire outside. And one clip that was left out is when we slice the bottom of the breadfruit, we make an X at the bottom and we pierce the heart so that the breadfruit can roast quicker. And one way to know if the breadfruit is roasted, you can just stick your knife in there. And if it comes out nice and clean, you know that your breadfruit is roasted. So immediately after taking it off the fire, we just run it under some cold water so that it's able to peel easily. As you can see here, you're going to need either an old kitchen towel or a piece of paper towel to hold it so that it doesn't burn your hands. And I know that a lot of you watching already know how to roast and peel a breadfruit. Even though in some homes, you um, we all know and learn how to do things differently. But this is the only way that I know how to do it. Alright, so we cut it in four and then remove the heart and then cut it in our desired slices. Next on the agenda is curry goat and I do have curry goat videos on my Facebook already but those videos were posted from my YouTube and they all have the YouTube audio on it which was copyrighted on Facebook so it doesn't hurt to make another one. So I just added some mixed herbs, mixed dry herbs and a pinch of masala. Now I'm adding some creole seasoning and oxtail seasoning. I don't like to add like a wide variety of powdered seasoning when I'm making curry because I think the curry in itself is enough flavor. I just added some curry on it and I'm just going to go ahead and rub in the seasoning and I already have my Dutch pot, my best friend on the stove heating up. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little oil in there. As soon as the oil is heated, I add some curry and this process is just to release some flavors from the curry and then I'm going to add the goat meat. So we're just going to stir the goat meat and allow it to sear in the curry and the oil for about 5 minutes and then we're going to cover the pot. Covering the pot will just allow it to simmer on its own and produce its own liquid. Alright, so this process is going to take about 5 to 10 minutes and as you can see it starts to produce its own liquid and we're just going to pump up the stove now and we're going to add some water from the kettle. We don't want to use any cold water, we're going to add some hot water that I have boiling from the kettle so that it can cook faster. You can either put this in your pressure cooker to finish cooking so that it can get tender faster if you're rushing but I am just going to go ahead and gradually add some water until it is nice and tender. While it's cooking, we want it to cook with flavor from the herbs. So we are adding some scotch bonnet pepper, scallion, garlic, and we're also adding some onion. Of course, depending on your spice tolerance, add your scotch bonnet pepper accordingly, okay? Don't tell me that I'm adding too much because I like my curry goat spicy and probably you don't. So just add it accordingly. I want to have it a little spicy, but I also want to taste the meat as well so I don't overly spice it. Next, I'm going to add some crushed pimento in there and we're going to cover this and let it cook properly. I like my meat falling off the bone and I don't know about you, some people like their meat a bit chewy. So while it's cooking, I went ahead and I cut up my potatoes and my carrots. Whenever I'm making my curry goat or curry chicken whatever i must have some diced potatoes and carrots in it not everyone like it but i do and the potatoes does help to give your gravy a little body so after adding water every 10 minutes interval adding the hot water allows the meat to get tender and my meat is finally tender 
and I'm adding some potatoes, carrots, some more scotch bonnet pepper, scallion, thyme, onion. All right, and we're just gonna allow this to cook down until it has like a semi-thick gravy. All right, some people like their gravy really runny. I don't, I like it kind of semi-thick and we're just gonna allow that to cook down. And of course, there's always someone in the house that don't eat what I'm cooking. My mother don't eat curry goat. The fish came scaled already, but you know, there's always some scale left back on it. So you have to brush it off and we're back outside and she's going to fry some fish for herself. And for me, of course, I really love fish. I'm a fish lover. Yes, give me fish every day, all day. Whether it's brown stew fish, whether it's escovish, steam. Anyway, it's prepared. I love fish. So anytime we cook outside, there's always rain, guys. I don't know why the rain ran us back inside and we had a lovely dinner. I enjoyed it to the fullest, especially the bread food. And you know, I am the one that shared the food. So of course, I hid two slices of the bread food for myself and I got caught. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my vlog. And I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget to share the video with a friend. If you have a curry goat lover in the family, just click the share button and share the video with them. All right. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend.